In this video, I'm gonna focus on one of the tastiest guitarists on the planet, Larry Carlton, and his unique approach to visualizing the fretboard using triads. Now it's really common to feel stuck inside the scale shapes when improvising, so Larry's method can get you out of that scale rut. <laughs> into fresher, more sophisticated and exciting ways of playing. There never seems to be a note wasted in Larry's playing, and all of his choices always seem to be the right ones. So I'll be digging into his unique take on improvising, which is based around what he calls chord over chord, and is sometimes referred to as the super arpeggio. Note for note transcriptions of everything I've played alongside the backing track are available on my support page. You can find the links down below. My name's Steve Allsworth, let's dive in. For this lesson, we'll be improvising over a couple of useful harmonic scenarios. The first is over a major 7, major 9 sound. And the second is over a largely static dominant 7 sound. Now it's important to remember that even though there are scales in and around most of the licks that we'll be looking at in this lesson, Larry tends to think of fleshing out the notes in and around the triad rather than the wider scale shape itself. And for me, it's this that defines Larry's trademark sound. As always, if you're enjoying the lesson, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep up to date with my future content. This concept is essentially stacking triads and it all starts with our trusty major triad. We're going to start with a B flat major triad, so that will be B flat, D, and F. And then we go to the second note in that triad and build a minor triad, that will be D minor. Then we go to the second note in that triad and build another major triad, so that will be F. Now the first powerful concept to really grapple with is that if we combine our first two triads, B flat and D minor, we'll end up with a B flat major seven chord. And you can see it with this shape. Similarly, if we combine all three arpeggios, B flat, D minor, and F major, we end up with a B flat major nine chord. Now this is where we start to run out of fingers on the guitar so we can play it with a more practical shape like so. Now you should be able to see that on top of this chord we've got an F major triad in first inversion over a B flat. Now this is where things start to get interesting because we're starting to hear extensions above the octave. And these are what we call our color notes or what Larry likes to refer to as his money notes. This lick essentially pivots around B flat and F major triads. And we can think of these as the one and five in the key of B flat. And this is one of Larry's most common moves when improvising over a major seven chord. Like our first lick, we've got this bluesy pentatonic idea. First lick. Now we can think of this as a really simple B flat major pentatonic lick because we're in the key of B flat. Just transposed up a fifth. Now 
Now, this simple pentatonic substitution idea is something that Larry uses a lot when playing over a major seven chord. But even though we might be thinking F major pentatonic when playing these lines, it's important to see the underlying F major triad. Now, if we keep stacking these triads, eventually we'll run into our first outside note. And that's a sharp 11 giving us a Lydian sound. Now, the C major triad, which is the next one in the sequence, is particularly evocative of that Lydian sound and is often paired with the home triad. This will be B flat. And this gives us what we refer to as a triad pair. Naturally, I'd encourage you to practice your B flat and C major triads all over the neck. This obviously sounds like an exercise, so in order to make music, think about interrupting the pattern and the rhythm, as well as introduce phrasing like slides, bends, rests, and so on. We've got three chords here, D13 sus, D7, to a C over D. We can easily outline this sound by using another triad pair, C major. You can see that being derived from this chord going to the D, which is our root chord. Now these two triads outline most of the notes from a D mixolydian scale. But rather than start with the scale itself, I'd encourage you to practice all the different permutations of C and D triads all over the neck, as it's this that will give you a completely different perspective when soloing. As well as these two triads, we've got lots of other arpeggios that we can use that are built from the D super arpeggio. So D major, F sharp diminished, then we move into the color notes or extensions with A minor, C, E minor, G major, and finally B minor. Any of these triads will sound great over our D7 groove, but if we take a step back from learning all of these shapes one by one, we might start to notice some connections between shapes that we already know. So take this D13 sus chord. If we change the root note to an A, you might recognize this A minor nine chord. If we change the root note to C, we'll get a C major nine. We've also got a G major triad on the top. We're viewing chords from multiple angles. And if we start to combine and substitute triads, we can create increasingly complex harmony. Now the next lick combines multiple triads from our super arpeggio, but also adds some chromaticism to add a little extra Larry Spice. The 
next idea is another common trick that Larry likes to use over dominant and dominant sus chords. Over a D7, we can superimpose G major seven and C major seven arpeggios to really target those upper extensions or money notes. Now Larry often plays these major seven arpeggios starting on the major seven interval, as this helps to create slightly more fluid legato phrases. This lick centers around pentatonic substitution and is really derived from the way that we were thinking about those upper extensions that were created when we were playing a G major seven over a D seven. We can simply play a G major pentatonic over our D seven and we'll hit all those upper extension money notes. Now you could think of this as E minor pentatonic, up a tone from the root, it's purely up to you. But if you want to dig into this in a little bit more detail, then check out my pentatonic substitution video. Now the final step, and perhaps most challenging part of this concept, is applying it to real world scenarios with different keys and chords. Very rarely does Larry stay in one key, so the two different key centers that we've got on the backing track can really help refine your skills of triads. I'd also encourage you to spend plenty of time with the different seventh chord types and try to find your own connections between them. As always, have fun trying to find your own money notes and I'll see you next time.